Book of Romans, the 12th chapter. Nobody leaves, please, tonight before I conclude the message. I'll try with God's help to be as brief as I can, whatever that means. No promises. The book of Romans, chapter number 12, the very first two verses. Please listen carefully to the reading of God's word. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your spirits, that you present your souls, that you present your bodies. Ah, that's the key tonight. I'm going to talk about bodies. Because a lot of you are so spooky, you don't talk about bodies. But the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Tonight I want to deal with one little word from the Bible. It's a word that has been misunderstood, overlooked, and deliberately misinterpreted. It's a word, sacrifice. Because ladies and gentlemen, the entire message of the gospel hinges on the word sacrifice. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a message of sacrifice. There was no way that never Mumba was going to be free, liberated spiritually, emotionally, and physically had, if Jesus had not come and died for him. God had to pay some kind of price for never to be free. Jesus had to cry to his father and say, Lord, if there's any other method that we could use or you can come up with in heaven, please take this cup away from me. But not my will, but your will. Be done. The Bible testifies that at that point, heaven was closed and there was no message from heaven to answer Jesus' prayer. Sacrifice is not... An interesting word amongst us in the church. As a matter of fact, we hate the word sacrifice. We are living in a supersonic age when everything is fast foods. When in the United States, when you're buying food, you buy it from the window as you drive through. Because we do not want to pay the price for anything. This is why people's lives and quality of people's lives has changed. Because we have a generation now that hates pain. We have a generation that hates commitment. A generation that always looks for an easy way out. God is saying, if Zambia shall be saved, I'm looking for some people that understand the word sacrifice. It's not a common word in the Pentecostal realm. In fact, if anything demands sacrifice, we call it the devil. I bind you, devil. You, you come against you. Uh-uh, that's not the devil. The Bible says this cup, you have to drink of it. Thank God Jesus didn't say when he was going to the cross that this is the devil. He said, not my will, but your will be done. People of God, Christians in this country. You will not see the glory of God in your life until you understand this word. 
What is the power of sacrifice? The sound comes. Stand and walk where Jesus waits with blessings in his hands. And all these what shocked me is that when I made an altar call like that, only old people came to the front, coming to get some. Brother Justin, you remember there in Buchiho, only old people coming. Because the music is playing as they respond to the rhythm of the music. And I, only the old people come. So when I went home, I asked the Lord, I said, why are not the young people coming to the front? Jesus said they can't come to those lukewarm, compromising kind of altar calls. Young men are not looking for a dead church. They are not looking for a weak Jesus. Uh -uh. They don't want to belong to a church that is there. They want, it's either Jesus is more powerful than those nightclub gigs and he's able to supersede that. The Jesus they want is somebody who can blow up some cancer. Somebody who is able to give them a fix. Which is higher than heroin and, and, and whatever you take at night. I don't know. I don't want to find out. But Jesus can give you a better fix than that. So one day, I went back there and I made a different altar call. I said, is there any man here who's got a backbone of iron? I said, tonight, I don't want sissies here. I want those of you that are brave enough because they used to tell us that if you're a Christian, you're weak. I had a friend of mine who was a self-acclaimed Marxist at Hillcrest Secondary School. Maybe he's in the crowd because he's saved. He has been born again since. He used to laugh at me. He had big teeth and a big mouth and he really made me feel intimidated. Nevers, Christian, you have been brainwashed, he said. He said, you know why you're a Christian, Nevers? Because you're weak. And I didn't know what to say to him. I believed him. Because almost all the Christians I saw were wimps. They think when they walk like that, then they are holy. So he said, you are a wimp. You have been brainwashed by white people, he said. You are what you are because white people brainwashed you. And I didn't have an answer. One day, I got upset. Then the Spirit of God gave me an answer for him. I said, hey, look, I am not weak. You are weak. He said, what, me? I'm not a wimp. I'm not a Christian. I'm a macho guy. We own drugs. We are high. Now I can whip you, nervous, if you want to prove it. On that point, I didn't want to pursue it. I'm not crazy. I ain't crazy. So, but I said, one day the Spirit of God rose up within me. And I said, I am not a wimp. You are a wimp. He said, explain it. I said, listen to me. I followed the devil for 17 years. I took every cigarette that he gave me. Drank every every alcoholic beverage that the devil gave me i did everything i i messed around with any susie that i found i had no guts to say no to the passion of my flesh but one day jesus came in and i turned around and said no to the devil and i said to him i said listen to me sir you are the wimp because you have failed to turn around from following the devil and following God. I said, who is the man between you and me? You haven't done anything. I've done something. To be a sinner is not a, a big deal. Even a chicken can commit adultery 